Hello once again. Uh, I have no idea where I got Chapel issue three from. This might have been in one of the boxes of comics that I've had a couple people, you know, while I've been doing this channel, a couple people have been very kind and sent me like a pile of comics just to kind of use for the channel. And I'm guessing that this was in there because I do not remember buying this at all. And so I'm rummaging through all my stuff and I can't remember if I had this on my own or if this was in one of those boxes that somebody sent me. I can't remember. Um, probably not going to shock you to hear me say that this thing is just awful. And, you know, it's from Image Comics. It's from Extreme Studios. It's all those kids making comic books for kids. And depending on your perspective... You could be like, that's just fine. That's all they are. They're supposed to be stupid, disposable, nonsensical garbage for 12-year-olds. Which is fine, I guess. But um, some people hold up some of these books as, like, revered as actually good. When I think the difference is, is you're holding on to your nostalgia as a kid because it was so fun and over-the-top and ridiculous and you just enjoy it so much as a kid, it's kind of hard to look at these things and say they're fucking awful. They're just the worst. The, the fun part to me is looking at them and just kind of objectively taking them apart and going, look how terrible this is. Um, starting with the cover, um, I've talked about this artist, Calvin Irving. Um, before I get too far, I want to reiterate I don't know how, when, or why, but quite a long time ago, the artist is Calvin Irving. He has passed away. He is dead. It's been a long time. And I only ever saw him, just he kind of showed up and started doing this chapel miniseries. And he had a style that was very much trying to do like the Extreme Studios over-the-top action style mixed with the Frank Miller and Jim Lee Deathblow style. And, you know, it's just derivative, but he had kind of this chaotic, crazy energy. Like all these guys that stand out, you could be kind of technically better, but just boring as shit. And then you could have another artist that's technically just horrible, like him, but energetic and interesting. So, you know, there's arguments to be made for why it's kind of okay and why it's also kind of terrible. This cover, I just keep staring at it. It's like his fist here, it's just a balled up fist. He didn't bother to draw like a handle that he's gripping. But then there's just this gun thing, this shape hanging out around the fist. And then I keep laughing at this. Like the screamy face is kind of okay. The arm coming forwards kind of okay. But that fist and that little teeny tiny little pile of like laser pointers like with all the crazy big technological gun things you put this little tiny thing and again it looks like he just drew a fist and then started drawing shapes around it when you draw a hand holding a gun you need to factor in that the hand is open holding like the handle there's a trigger all that type of stuff these guys just draw a fist and then draw technological stuff around it and then look Chapel's got like, instead of a bandolier of bullets, he's got like a bandolier of, I don't know, monkey skulls? They're not human skulls. What are they? Wh whose skulls are those? And why has he got them strapped around his body except to look awesome? So I'm not going to pretend to tell you what the hell's going on in this story because this is issue three. I've reviewed a couple of them some while ago. There's no <laughs> discerning what this nonsense is. or I mean, there is, but... By the time you spend some effort figuring out what's going on, you're going to be like, that was a waste of time. The interesting thing is how many damn people it took to create this book. Plot by this Brian Witten, never heard of him, don't know who that is. Script, Brian Witten and Eric Stevenson. Calvin Irving drew pages 1, 11, 14, and 15. Richard Horry did pencils of 12, 13, 16, and 17. And Shelby Robertson did pages 2 through 10. And then inkers, Richard Horry, pages 12, 13, 16, 22. Eric Ken, 4, 5, 8, and 10. Sean Parsons, 2, 3, 6, 7, and 9. Danny Meeky, pages 14 and 15. John Sabal, page 1. So, 
holy shit, this is a whole bunch of people to create this pile of garbage. Um, Jonathan Sabal and Danny Meek are really good inkers. This Shelby Robertson, I, it's funny that I saw this name because I follow this guy on Instagram. I just ran across his page one time some while ago and saw he kind of had like a very image comics kind of style and was really good. So I just started following him. Then I've just subsequently found out that he's been drawing and working in the industry for like 30 years. I'm like, I don't remember seeing him anywhere that I noticed. Um, so I was looking at his page. He's a really good penciler now. Um, he might be a better inker. He's, he's a really, really good inker. Um, I don't know enough about his work to say this 100%. I don't mean any disrespect to him, but he maybe he's a better inker than he is a penciler. But um, Calvin Irving, of course, is no longer with us. And Richard Horry, I don't know what he does anymore. Um, he was just one of those guys for the studio, the Extreme Studios, that was like the middle of the pack at best you know, hires that drew just some random books. All the studios, the Top Cow and the Wild Storm all had those artists that were just kind of okay. And then they, every studio had a couple of standouts that just shook everyone up. And um, Richard Horry, to my, what I've ever seen, he was never, he never really took off. But consistently middle of the pack reliable. Anyway, Tons of creatives, you know, writers, pencilers, inkers, colorers, letterers, Jesus Lord. So you got Chapel, and he's fighting this bad guy, Geiger, or Geiger. That's this villainous presence that's been in these Extreme Studios books forever. He's just a big, angry faced fucking nobody with a bunch of technological stuff hanging off him. And Chapel's going to fight him. It took me a while of staring at this drawing. There's several instances where this comes up where you're like, what in the holy shit am I looking at? It's either indecipherable or the storytelling's unclear. You can't follow it. So this is Calvin Irving only doing pencils because it says inks page one, Jonathan Sabal. It would be really interesting to see what the pencils look like because everything that I've seen so far from Calvin Irving when he was doing this it was him inking himself. Like a very thick brush influenced kind of, again, Frank Miller, Sin City, Jim Lee, Death Blow style. He only penciled. And I'd be really curious to know what Jonathan Sabal got from him to get. But I'm like, okay, so I'm like, what is, what? I guess this is his knee of his left leg coming forward and his leg coming down, hand up here. But I'm like, what are all these pipe things? But I guess he's constricted. Things around his wrist holding him steel. This is his other leg coming forward. His knee's here. And then his leg comes back this way. And then look, this is his foot. He's like a giant horse. Like, you tell me what I'm looking at. It's the classic pose of hunched over. And so his leg comes forward, bends at the knee, comes back to the ankle. And then your foot comes down. But it should end like there but i guess maybe what he's trying to do let me find a little pointer is that maybe the the implication was that the foot ended here and then this is some kind of like reflection on the ground i don't know i wonder if sabal knew it's so weird it doesn't make any sense it's just abstract nonsense but anyway he's caught he's trying to save his buddy jeff's daughter he's getting he's there there to get her and then he's gonna get out of there and uh, this geiger assholes haha ha, you will not do that you will die and then suddenly the chaotic insanity that's going on suddenly feels like it comes like a screeching halt and it's just calm so then here's geiger pointing at a video screen saying, hey, look at all these spots on the map of the world. I'm going to blow everything up. It's a deadly virus that's going to release onto humanity, killing everybody. So I guess this is a picture of some monster for some reason. A deadly virus that will annihilate every human being. The, the virus will be active for seven days. And on the eighth day, my Cybermen will emerge and will take over the Earth. And so... <laughs> So who drew this? Pencils. 
So this is that Shelby Robertson. Again, this is like 30 years ago. So, you know, if I'm harsh on the guy, I understand that this is forever ago. He's probably a new artist and he's not going to be any good like any of these guys at Extreme Studios were to start for the most part. That's not a bad face. It's kind of more effort put into drawing a fist than a lot of artists would do. But monster face, okay. And then these are cybernetic men rising from the ashes, I guess. I, I don't know what this is. I have no idea what this panel is supposed to be showing me. I, I just, I can't decipher it. But basically, bad guy's like, I'm going to wipe out humanity and my cybernetic minions and I will rise up and take over everything. So then <laughs> the storyteller, I guess this Geiger is way up on this railing. So this is his head and his hand and a railing bar. He's looking down. So Chapel's there and then some cyber guys are coming out and um, they're trying to get Chapel to join them. And Chapel actually has to decide. You will either join me or die. So Chapel's like, all right, but you're going to lock me up until I decide. And they're like, yeah, just a precaution. This is like, as I kind of, I, I don't want to say I read this story, but I kind of perused it and read some of the dialogue. Like, this is like cliche 10-year-old superhero, not even superhero, like anti-hero stuff, like a kid trying to write big awesome adult stuff it's like it's they're trying to make it sound adult and serious but it sounds so bad but like you're gonna join me or die you're gonna lock me up until i decide you're a dangerous person i'm gonna let you cross me so chapel's literally like well let me grab a let me grab a stick of gum um i'm not joking chapel's like let me have a stick of gum so he can chew on it and they're like, whatever you need, go ahead and get your stick of gum. So he puts his gum in his mouth. And then <laughs> this is one of those things where like, I know what I'm looking at because I'm familiar with the language of comics. But I'm I like if I were to hand this to somebody else and be like, what's in this panel? What are you seeing? I don't think anybody would be able to decipher it if you don't read comics. I don't think anybody would get that these are forearms and these fucking boxing gloves are supposed to be like metal restraints. They'd be like, well, there's chains. I don't know what these are. I don't know what those are. I don't know what the background is. It's just terrible. And then we get into the the bad guy. Now that face there is supposed to be this same face there. Like the coloring's different. The technology's sort of different. They don't even have the glowing eye. It doesn't look like the same guy, but it is the same guy and it's drawn by the same artist. So again, I'm, I keep just being like, my brain is exploding out of my skull. What is this thing in the background? What is this shape? I just, I have no idea. And then, you know, we're back with the, uh, you know, these characters in Extreme Studios. I, I've, I've decided that these things are robotic dildos stuck to the sides of their faces. So... That's the same guy there. Again, if you haven't read comics, like, would you be able to identify what the shape is here? That that's supposed to be a fist? Again, I just, I know that if I hand this to somebody who doesn't read comics and be like, what is that? And I don't know that they'd ever figure it out that that's supposed to be a fist. Bad guy's like, ha ha, we're gonna win. We're evil, we're cool. So then Chapel, he's, ugh, these are just the worst drawings. I guess that's Geiger again there. But then Chapel takes, he's got his metal boxing gloves on because now he's in shackles. And he spits the gum out onto the shackles. He's like, yeah, but that's not, he's thinking to himself, that's not gum. I'm like, oh, I bet you it's an explosive. Go then, so then it goes Katoom. And then these are just like, I thought that they were trying to say it like blew his hands apart. And they're like these skinny, frail, like, burned hands but no it's just supposed to show that he blew the things off his hands it's so dumb it's like you're fine and you let them put the shackles on you just so you can get out five seconds later and fight them why go through this whole shtick of letting yourself get shackled they didn't even like take you to a 
prison cell and leave you there to rot and now you escape and you're running around secretly it's five seconds later they put the shackles on you and then you put the gum on it and they blow off and then now you just start fighting he's got a gun somehow i guess one of these other bad guys that we haven't even really seen these shadowy silhouette shapes that come along and shackle them that you don't see anywhere except there and there god this is another case of like Bad storytelling equals comics suck. So he kicks some shape, and then I guess he's got a gun, although it just looks like there's a giant fireball on the end of his arm. And so he shoots a bunch of people we didn't know were there. And then this is just like this weirdly shaped, ridiculous drawing, and he's holding this gun, which we've never seen before. He's just standing there holding a gun. <laughs> just so awful and then cybermen i guess more of the bad guys are coming so chapel does something to a wall and then i guess this is supposed to be a door slamming i only know that because it says slam so i guess the implication is more cybermen are coming the bad guys and that's what these little shapes are supposed to be the door so chapel pushes a button to shut the door so now he's trapped in here with geiger himself why is everything exploding around him what caused things to explode? I don't I don't understand. So I guess these are Chapel's feet, and this is Geiger up on the the railing up there. Super heavily shadowed face, sort of there, arm there, teeth there, and <sighs> Chapel, like I was saying earlier, the whole point is he's supposed to get his best or one of his friends' daughter. Well, I guess now there's just a hole in the ground. He's like, you're looking for Jeff's daughter. Well, if you can handle her, she's all yours. I'm like, oh, God. What's going to happen? So there's just a hole in the ground. And then just there's the girl. Now, this is Calvin Irving again. We got away from Shelby Robertson, who was, you know, doing the best his young self could probably do. He was probably in his 20s, if I had to guess, very early 20s. Just considering he's been drawing comics since, you know, the 90s and he's still producing today. So I'm going to put him in his 50s or his 60s if I had to guess. But then there's this girl and Geiger is like, you can call her Slice with a Y. S-L-Y-C-E. You could call her Slice. When the country is reborn, she'll be my cyber queen. What's funny is like, it looks like this would be like a little asterisk there. Like like a little asterisk to point you to like reference this thing, but there's nothing to reference. So I'm like, is that just a fuck up? So slice again. I don't know if this girl this girl must have been introduced in the comics earlier. I don't remember. She looks like a one part zealot, one part Psylocke, and one part stupid. All these blades, of course, her name's Slice. Her hair is or like really tight back and long braids. I don't know what she's got hanging on. It looks like a belt of vibrators hanging off her thigh pad there. And Chapel's not even looking at her. He's just staring at us. It's like, turn around, stupid. That's where the girl's at. So I guess she's coming out of the hole in the ground. And then, so we get a close-up on Chapel's face. I guess they forgot to paint or color on the white skull paint that Chapel's supposed to be wearing, which is right here. Well, it's not there. So then she jumps to the air, and this feels like a slight ripoff of a Jim Lee pose of Psylocke jumping through the air in one of those issues of X-Men. I know exactly which one it is. I've seen it before. It's not an exact copy, but it's kind of close. And I, I'm kind of like, I don't mind that an artist would do that. But I see that, and I'm like, I think somebody's referencing Jim Lee. She jumps, I guess she kicks Chapel in the nuts, and then they both catch on fire or something. I don't know what's going on. It doesn't tell you. You can't discern what's going on from the image. And then I, I was like, I'm like, well, who's this? Is this still Slice? Her name's Martha. Oh, my God. M Martha. <coughs> um... It didn't look like the same girl, so I had to keep, keep coming back. I'm like, what's this line across her face? She didn't have it here, and I'm like, oh, wait, she does. She's got this line, and then it's kind of colored differently, so some kind of, like, metal mask, I guess, but it's got a perfectly human-shaped nose and mouth that changes expression on occasion. So I'm like, this is her? 
Oh, okay, I guess it is. He's like, hey, your father, Jeff, sent me Jeff Jackson. She's like, I have no father. Our father's dead. So she punches him, just sends him flying. I don't know where she got superpowers from. So now Geiger, he's standing here. And then this must be a different artist because look what a monstrous figure he is there. But then just over here, he's like this scrawny little bitch over here. So it's like it doesn't even look like the same guy. Nothing on his back there. All kinds of shit on his back there. This is a much more intimidating version. So we stand there looking tough. I guess Slice is pulling up a big old dagger and she's going to stab him in the head. Exaggerated body. I think this is um, Calvin Irving drawing. Weird proportions, but the dynamic part of it, of the drawing, kind of makes it work. It's kind of okay because it's interesting and energetic and dynamic, even if it's wrong in just about every way. She tries to stab him. He kicks her right in the pussy. Um, he grits his teeth and he's like, his literally the dialogue is like, oh, she's part robot. Oh, wait, duh, literally, duh, turn the computer off. So I guess he grabs at the back of her head and there's some computer wires. He just rips the wires out and then you don't see her anymore. And so now Geiger's like, good job. You did good. Now it's just the two of us. It's like, it's so bad. He like brings on the girl to fight and then he defeats her. And like, now it's just us two. Can't pass up. Every time I see this drawing, I know I shit on life a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. I really do. I like this drawing. I don't know why. It's like the perfect balance of exaggerated bullshit nonsense and still kind of awesome somehow. I look at that and whatever it is, I want to read it. Just there's something about it. I'm, I'm a hypocrite, I know. Um, whatever. Geiger's like, we need to fight. So Chapel, I guess, takes a knife and I guess he throws it. And I guess it chops off Geiger's arm. So then we get screamy faces of Chapel and Geiger. Okay, Jesus Christ. And then this is, I think, the last spread of Calvin Irving. Um, I cannot barely make out what I'm looking at here at all. Like, look at that. I can see Geiger's head. And so then, by natural kind of figuring out, this is his upper body. And there's, like, somebody's ass. So I'm like, okay, so this is chapel in front of him. So is this dark shape that disappears into the form, his head and his bandana? So this is his back. This is his ass. He's carrying, like, a staple gun or something. It just, you could look at that and go like, that's fucking badass, man. I can't, it's just, it's so cool. I guess I can't see what I'm looking at. And then Chapel, he just looks like Death Blow now, which has kind of always been the thing going on in these books. Now he's got guns and he's shooting and he just riddles Geiger with bullets. Geiger literally says, even though he's missing an arm, Bullets can't hit a man of, or can't hurt a man of steel, Chapel, but lasers can kill you. So I guess this is as Geiger shooting all these lasers. So then Chapel's diving out of the way, shooting his guns again. I and mean, then, you know, they're supposed to be bullets because he literally says bullets can't hurt a man of steel. They just bounce off him. But now the next panel, the bullets blow through his leg. I thought we just established one page over that bullets can't hurt him. What the fuck? And then I guess Chapel's having like a, uh, a premonition of the skull shape. I guess when Chapel blows his brains out in the issue of Youngblood, he goes to hell, takes over hell, and then becomes a big extreme studios crossover event where he's the Lord of Hell or something. I don't have those books. I've got parts of them, sort of. Um, I don't know what I'm looking at. I guess it's an arm and a hand. I, I guess. And they're just standing at each other. I'll crush you with my hands. And Chapel says, no, you're just a walking piece of scrap metal. A girl could take you now. They literally say a girl could take you. This feels like a 10-year-old kid is, is writing this story. So then we get a big shot of Geiger's face. Now he looks like an old, withering man. This is what happens when you have 20 different artists drawing the same book. This face shot there is supposed to be that guy there. Like, it's completely different, but it's a different artist. 
Um, it's kind of not bad. The hand is kind of all right. The face is kind of all right. It's pretty well done. Um, there's, the pages aren't numbered, or, so I can't tell who's doing it, but I'm going to guess Richard Horry. Probably pages 16 and 17, a little more competent. So I don't know. Maybe i got to give them some credit. But they tackle each other, and somebody's got a wire. I guess he pulls it out of a wall and electrocutes him with the wire. Because this is how a 10-year-old would write this. So he pulls a cable out of a wall, I guess. I mean, I'm just guessing, and electrocutes him. And so now Geiger's just leaning up against the wall, and he's like, you may have destroyed my physical shell, but I'll build a new one. I've beat death before. I can do it again. Yeah, a 10-year-old wrote this. And then it's there's a bomb going to explode. Implies in nine seconds. And then, so I guess all this energy bursts out of Geiger into this technological whatever up here. It's like it's downloading his essence, because he's technological, up into the computer system. It took me a while of staring at this to figure out what the fuck I'm looking at. That's supposed to be like a like a dish, like a like a satellite dish. And it's shooting his computer digital essence off into the who knows where universe so he can rise again another day. And then it just cuts to a page where I guess they're on a cliff. There's three silhouette shapes and a tire connected to something. And then over here, I guess that's supposed to be a building of some type because it goes kaboom. But it says literally 0, 0. 0.00.09. Isn't it like nine milliseconds? Or maybe that's just the time for him to download. And they, they'd set a bomb later. I don't fucking know. But it's Chapel. And there's some fucking kid. Where's the kid? If, you're if, you're if you have a comic book and you got multiple characters, you need to show that they're still in the story and not just throw them in on the last page of the book. And then I was like, the girl. Oh, right, the girl, the daughter. He rescued her. He's like, thank God I rescued you. And um, at least you've got a future. Next issue, Babe Watch. I was like, oh, my God. What a tone-deaf, childish pile of garbage. It's just the worst. Combat, the Barbarian Warrior. I've always had like a vague fascination with the character of Combat because he didn't have any characterization built into no goddamn thing in the the books of Youngblood itself. But the idea of this warrior alien, I was kind of interested. I kind of want to see if these actually exist. Um, I don't know if I'm interested in watching combat fight back in ancient barbarian times, but I guess I'd try it. And then we've got chapel number five, because this is issue three, and they're touting ch chapel issue five. Well, where's issue four? And it's got Spawn and Chapel teaming up, written by this guy, the same artist, and art by Calvin Irving. I bet you that doesn't exist. I have no idea when Calvin Irving passed away. But it was a long time ago. If I had to guess, he probably died before this would be this made because this would be a big deal. Because Spawn and Chapel have a big crossover in the Youngblood series because Chapel wants to become an un undead ruler of hell and he figures out how to do that through Spawn. But together again to settle the score, a new three-part storyline starting in Chapel number five. So I, if I had to guess, that never happened. And it's maybe because Calvin died. I don't know. Um, Grifter Badrock. How terrible could it be? I'd actually like to find out and see. And then the shepherd is coming. I think this is supposed to be like, you know, the writers and the creators trying to, like, this is Silver Surfer. It's the coming of Galactus and this is the surfer. And the weight is like, you can imagine, like, I've read all those Marvel comics. And remember when the Silver Surfer showed up? We had this great... Fantastic Four comic going on with all kinds of characterization built up over tons of issues and all this build up and the surfer comes along and Galactus comes with him and they want to throw in that same kind of weight and drama when none of these characters have any kind of like backstory you give a shit about. So it visually is like trying to fool you into thinking it's important. It is not. And then the biggest insult to Battlestar Galactica that could ever be imagined was being made by extreme studios so chapel um childish junk just just awful 
I'm sorry that Calvin, Calvin Irving passed away. Um, he had something. Calvin had something. And if he could have had the opportunity to, I mean, obviously if he didn't die, he could have kept drawing. And I bet he, there's a very good chance he could have developed into an incredible artist with a really defined, interesting style. Because he had something interesting. He had the raw energy and talent. He just needed time to hone it and become the best possible version of himself that he could be. And unfortunately, never got the chance. And we're left with these garbage chapel comics. So that's all I've got for now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.